hosted by Tony Gapperstone. Thanks for tuning in. It's showtime. It is showtime, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Tony Gapperstone here, everybody, coming at you live from Redwood City. I'm so thrown off my game today because our city has been wiped out. 17,000 people do not have power. Didn't have it at my house. Didn't have it at the Brave Maker studio. So look, <laughs> you get me in Pete's Coffee in Redwood City today. Very informally as I'm drinking my oat milk latte, I'm gonna be talking with our special guest. But let me break it down for you. First of all, my pronouns are he, him, his, and I'm a white Caucasian dude. White Caucasian, I'm, yeah, that's it, I'm that. And I'm wearing a brown beanie with my black glasses and my Italian shirt that says Andiamo, which means let's go. And I am a writer, a director, and a producer, an actor. And I love living in the San Francisco Bay Area. You can find my first feature film, Last Chance Charlene, out for two weeks now. It's on Apple TV and Amazon and all the places. Just Google it, Last Chance Charlene. Give it a watch. Own it, rent it, whatever you want to do. Uh, and this is episode 185. And I have a really special guest today who's doing creative things, doing the Brave Maker thing that I met on Twitter, y'all. So Twitter's not dead. Don't give up on it. So let me, with that introduction, welcome my guest today, Kyra Knox. Welcome, Kyra. Hi. Kyra in Philadelphia. I'm, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> I'm hanging I in know, there. I know. I feel so bad. We, we both have a story to tell of a hard, challenging week. I'm going to let you uh, give your introduction, where you're from. I'm going to do your physical description, your pronouns for all of our viewers and listeners who will be on the podcast listening later. Please do. I am Kyra Knox, a producer, director, right here, born and raised in Philadelphia. Um, and I am a black woman with a very high, big braided bun. I'm wearing gold hoop earrings and a denim shirt. Did you say a denim? Oh, a denim shirt. Okay, you're wearing a it's denim. Philly you... It's the Philly I was... accent. <laughs> I love this accent. And I was telling Kyra off podcast that I go to Philly uh, well, every year, twice a year. So I'll be there in October. Maybe we'll link up. But this is a great example, all y'all who are watching. And if you're watching live, feel free to put comments or questions in the chat that you have for Kyra. Amy, thank you, Amy, our producer from Austin, Texas, who's with us live too. She'll be popping things in there for you to follow along. But Kyra is doing it, y'all. Living the life from Philadelphia, not New York, not Hollywood. Making a life producing creative media so first of all give us your backstory how did you get into this what's your origin story Kyra? i want to hear it all wow um let's see long story short even though it might be a tad bit long so i'll be 39 in april i actually quit my job when i was 34 years old to follow my dreams of being a producer i yep i was working in corporate america in the spa industry. And, you know, I just couldn't do it anymore. Um, my husband came home. I was crying on the couch. And I said, you know, can I quit my job? Can I, can I follow my dreams? And he said, give me 90 days. So I walked into my job the next day and I gave them my 90 days notice. Um, in the middle of that, because I am a trained actor, I've been acting since I was six years old at Freedom Theater. Started out at Freedom Theater, excuse me. Um, and <laughs> I got hired by a production company to be the lead actress in their short film. And you know, when you're supposed to be resting, I would go to the crew and say, hey, do you need any help? And by that time, the when we wrapped, excuse me, the CEO, he said, well, what are you into? And I said, well, I just quit my job because I want to be a producer. And he said, well, do you want to work here one day a week? I said, okay. Fast forward, <laughs> you know, within that first year, um, I started casting docu-series for watching a know by Yahoo. Didn't know how to cast. I figured it out, Google, social media. Uh, Yahoo, they loved the stories that I was finding. Next thing you know, 
Hira, um, can you be the associate producer for these projects? How do I be associate producer? I'll figure it out. <laughs> and then, you know, by the end of that year of me quitting my job, I was producing and directing my own episodes for watching the know by Yahoo and ended up winning two silver tellies for my work. Um, and the rest has been history. You know, it's, I always tell people, I think it came so easy for me because I decided to walk in my purpose. Okay. All right. So people are listening right now going, all right, you quit your job 90 days notice. And then it just happened. Like, was there a, month or two where you were freaking out or did it seem to be pretty quick because you made the intention to make it happen can you give some real specific oh. things oh i freaked out <laughs> i'm a tourist so tourists is we love stability and i was rocking my whole entire zhuzh you know and when i first started out i didn't know about the freelance work so i'm all like wait i don't get a paycheck every two weeks i gotta wait 30 days for my first paycheck and my oh, sometimes 60 right if you're freelancing bro <laughs> so you know and so that first paycheck didn't come until those 30 days and let's not forget i was only working one day a week so when i quit my job in september i didn't get my first real paycheck until february that next year in 2019 so there was a moment where I had a crossroad where my old job called me back and they said, hey, do you want to come back for the holidays, you know, to work on some paperwork or really getting piled up? And I was like, man, I could really use this paycheck right now. And I told myself, if I go back, I won't leave. And I decided to power through and I just kept chugging Ooh. along. And it worked out. Okay. That's Lots good. of noodles and noodles. <laughs> Lots of noodles and noodles. I will say that. <laughs> and for the West Coasters, I know what noodles and noodles are because I used to live in Illinois. That's ramen. You're talking about packaged 10 cent packages oh! of ramen. We don't call them noodles and noodles. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, we, we hear you. We hear you, Oodles. I love it. This is great. This is great. All right, so the sacrifice. You had to make some sacrifices. You had yes. a supportive partner, I hear, though, which is yeah. huge. Uh, yes. The temptation to go back for stability, you cut mm -hmm. it off. Yes. Okay, so earlier to the response, you were saying you figured out as you went, you didn't know how to cast, you didn't know how to associate produce. So talk a little bit about that. Like, what are you, you know, as you reflect back, what are some of the things you would do differently when you first started? Because there are a lot of people who are listening who are trying to figure out, do they go full force? Do they go full time? And what would you do differently based on your reflection now? So I, I said a long story short, right? Before I decided to quit my job, um, an old friend of mine asked me if I could produce their short films. I'm like, as a producer do like I, I'm, I'm organized so maybe that's why they're asking me to do this I took a $70 class at Philly cam which is like a nonprofit organization here in Philadelphia and the class was how to become a producer <laughs> and from there that's when I caught the bug and then asked if I could uh quit that's actually my husband right there <laughs> what's up James <laughs> Um, and that's, that's really how I got that, uh, that bug. Now, when it came to actually becoming an associate producer and all of that, when I was trying to learn my, the production manager that was above me, he, I would ask like, Hey, can I, you know, learn how to do a call sheet? Can I learn how to do this? Can I learn? Oh, I got it. I got it. And it wasn't until I actually had a black female production manager, her name is Cheryl, who is a great friend of mine's now. She took me under her wing and she showed me everything. She had me in every single meeting. She had me on every single phone call. I was like, Cheryl, how do I write interview questions? How do I do this? How do I, and she just, just gave me a wealth of knowledge and I soaked it up like a sponge. And once she gave me that knowledge, 
there was no stopping me. I took every single challenge. But for people that might not be that fortunate to have a Cheryl, a lot of things that I've done, I went to film festivals. And at those film festivals, I went to panels. I went to a lot of panels. I listened to YouTube. Uh, Twitter was a big resource. I tell people all the time, Instagram is where you show off your work, but Twitter is where a lot of people give you so much knowledge. It's a huge resource for me, even now. Um, and those are some of the things that I did. And when I was veering from being a producer to becoming a director, you know, one of the things that I would do is I would sit inside the editing room with either Devisia, who's a black female editor or Kevin, who's one of my, ah, my number one editors who I love. Um, and I would sit with them and I would ask them, okay, what did I do wrong? with this footage, how can I make my episode better, you know? And they started teaching me things like, Kyra, you need to get an establishing shot. Kyra, you know, crew shouldn't be talking during these type of moments. And I took all of those jewels from an editor, from a post-production team, and that's how I started becoming a better director. Because I always tell people, editors are directors too. They're the ones that's crafting the story alongside the directors and the producers so you are dropping some gems here i love your initiative uh and i also just want to shout out cheryl way to go cheryl the mentoring community the mentoring relationships in filmmaking are huge uh, you know i'm very much aware of my privilege that i have uh and sometimes it's you know it's a reckoning right to look at like what i've been able to get but I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have somebody who put their arm around me. So I'm with you. I had to go to Twitter. Mm -hmm. I had to figure it out myself and YouTube my way and learn on set. So I want to say uh, those who have been historically excluded, the disadvantages that you have to, I know are so much bigger, but keep going. It's worth it. And sometimes you have to ask, ask people to mentor you. Ask. If nobody's mm -hmm. offering, ask the person. And I think like more than ever before relationships can be built like i have a feeling we'll connect again you know because we it's been a year of twitting tweeting twitting or touring together <laughs> and now and now we're here and who knows you have bay area connections you're working with bay area oh, yeah. yes i do who who knows right what is going to happen with this connection like that's one of the reasons why i do the show is i want to meet talented people mm -hmm. like you because i want to build those relationships so i just a huge kudos to you for doing that um what is like when you think of like the Cheryl's, when you think about the, the things that you have learned, what is the thing that you now are giving out or obviously you're giving back by being on this podcast? Are you finding ways to uh, bring in the emerging artists and storytellers? And yourself? What does that look like? Always. When, you know, when people hit me up on Twitter, I'm always the first one to give them answers. I always open up that door um, because my thing is that I want to continue the bridge that Cheryl gave to me, you know, and I want to continue mentoring. I know one of my mentees that I am so proud of, his name is Jalen. And when I first, first of all, I've known him since he was a little kid. But when I found out that he went to, he was going to my high school, creative and performing arts high school. And this is around the same time that I was starting getting into producing. And I was like, oh, what is he going for? And they told me film. I was like, oh, well, bring him with me. I had him on every single set of mine. When I started out at that production company as a runner, PA, and once I became a producer, he was still in high school. I asked him, I said, I asked the creative director, Melanie, I said, hey, can we bring Jalen here in the summertime as an internship? And he was in high school. That's unheard of, right? Like to have an internship in high school. And from there, I've seen him just grow and grow. And he's doing phenomenal on Temple. And now he's like an AC when people from college are only getting hired for production assistant roles. He's like up here. And I am incredibly proud of him. Jalen does all my BTS videos, my BTS photos. And that's another thing that I do. You know, when people come to me and say, how do, how can I get into production? 
I tell them, I'm like, hey, when I'm having one of my personal projects, come on my set, be a production assistant. Let me know what you're trying to get into and then I will put you next to that person. So if you're trying to get into post-production, I will put you next to my girl, Sam, who does all my data dumping and colors and everything like that. You're into lighting, I'm gonna put you with my gaffer, you know? I will put you next to that person so that way it'll help you get a leg up. And I believe that that's very important, especially in black and brown communities because we don't have access that a lot of people have, you know? So I'm, my door is always open to anyone that's trying to get into this industry. Okay, okay, okay. You, 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 thank you for doing that. I love this philosophy. That's the same thing we try to do with Brave Maker. And, and I start people in the same way. Come take photos, come to BTS, come learn. That's such a great way. So again, if you're listening to this, if you're watching, Kyra gave an open invitation. Find her on Twitter, ask her some questions. You never know, especially if you're in Philadelphia, reach out because maybe you could be on a set, right? That's, that's, that's where it starts. Volunteer yeah. yourself to get onto a set, bring value to the film community. All right, so if you're watching, uh, you are seeing some footage of Kyra's documentary coming up. Can you start to tell us a little bit about this feature documentary that you have coming out in the world? Let's now, hear it. This is my baby. Um, my documentary, Bad Things Happen in Philadelphia, is about the gun violence that's happening in our city. And when we started um, production um, on this film, I had no idea that we would be breaking records on the gun violence here in Philadelphia. Um, and with these kids, I mean, their stories, they, and I call them kids now. I mean, when I started filming them, they were like adult teens, but now I gotta stop calling them kids, but they're like my kids now. <laughs> um, but their stories were so impactful. And what I failed to mention is that um, it started out with the founder of Shoe Basketball's Not People, who is my cousin, Gary. Um, and he uses his organization to keep the kids off of the streets. Um, and he's been mentoring these kids that you see featured here in his doc. Wow. Since they were 10, 11. And now one of them, David King, he's 21 now. When I first interviewed him, he was like in high school as a senior. So it's just just to see them grow up. And I seen these kids going into my grandma's house when I was still working in corporate, you know? Um, so it's just, it's just a very special doc. And I feel like I'm rambling. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but I get- No, please. You're not, this, you're not. this is- Sorry, I, I get teary-eyed when I, I start- I think um, we may have a lot- no, I, I think this is exactly what we hope to hear. And I hope that we're all coming through here uh, on the Brave Maker Show, episode 185. Kyra Knox is talking about her, her documentary, her personal documentary about what's happening in Philadelphia. And this is what I think makes a brave storyteller. What makes a brave film is something that is personal, that does come through and gives people a window into what is happening in the world. So I, yeah, this is amazing. So for this documentary, can you talk a little bit about what the plan is? I know is um, you obviously you've shot a ton and it's coming. What's the, when can people expect to see it? What is the whole timeline of production and post for you? Oh, post-production, we're done. <laughs> we are done. We are done. I. I cried when I finally realized that I was finished this film because I started production in May 21st, 2021. Um, and I actually realized that I finished the film and I gave it the approval when I was in Austin, Texas, where your producer Amy is. <laughs> I was with um, my head of production, Maria, who has now turned into an amazing friend. And one thing I do want to give credit, and I'm backpedal a little bit to, I want to give credit to Maria because Maria is my head of production. I'm a commercial producer full time. And when she saw that I was getting so swamped in my shoots, I kept on saying, oh, I'm going to finish up bad things. I'm going to finish up bad things. And she 
that you keep saying that, but you're not doing it. And she basically set a separate meeting with me and said, it's breaking my heart that you're not finishing your film. And she really like laid it into me, showed me how to set up my calendar, showed me how to multitask between a, commer a demanding commercial producing job where I'm traveling throughout the country and still get my film done. Now, I, I have so much gratitude for her. And I know I just went on a whole nother tangent, but I think it's very important when you find, you know, um, bosses that support your dreams as well, you know, and don't let you stop following your dreams to do other people's dreams, if that makes sense. That's a hard line to figure out is how do you partner with the right people and how do you say goodbye like to what you said, whether it's safety and stability, but also there are some good people we have to say goodbye to. If we really want to focus on our stories, you might have to. I know with Brave Maker, there are people who are going to have to move on and I hope I can bless them to do it and empower them to do it because I don't want people staying around here forever just doing the things that we're doing if they're not going after their own thing. So I think that's a really powerful point that you're making. Can you share a little bit about how you know when to do that? Like, what does it look like? Is it a gut feeling? Is it just the encouragement and affirmation of others? What does that look like for you? To 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 do what? To leave commercial producing? Yeah, or no, just to go after your stories and tell your stories. Like, how did you know? How do you know when to gauge that decision? Um, I get inspired. So with bad things happen in Philadelphia, it actually started out with a short. Uh, a short branded documentary for watching and know by Yahoo. And with that, you know, I got inspired listening to my cousin's story, listening to the kids. And I said, okay, like, I feel like we need more. This is more than just a five minute branded documentary. And then I spoke to my DP who was a DP for that. And I said to Hector, I was like, I think one day we should turn this into like a longer, short document, but it's our story to tell. And then what happens? COVID hits, right? So I'm like, man, why didn't I just do it? And I didn't do it because imposter syndrome sunk in, right? Like, oh, I had just quit my job a few years back. I'm not ready for this. These people that I'm working with, they've been in this industry for years and years and years. And when the world stopped because of COVID, I realized, you know, I have to, I have to just go for it. And COVID's still not over. But when things started opening up, I just, I just, I just started doing. I just started filming. I didn't have a penny in my pocket, but I had friends that work in the industry that believed in the message and believed in what I was doing. And we just started filming, and then it just went from there. so inspiring uh, i love it now tell me about the the next projects that you have coming out like obviously you're doing commercials as a full-time gig but what after bad things happen in philadelphia is there another personal project that you have coming down the pike i know all of us creative people have lots of plates <laughs> that are spinning so i have so bad things happen in philadelphia tentatively is looking like it's coming out in June. So that's when people hopefully will be able to watch it because if it wasn't coming out in June, I was going to submit to your festival. I just hope you know that. Um. <laughs> well, well, let's talk about that. Maybe, you know, let's, <laughs> let's figure this out. Of bravery, you know, making yeah. a documentary about gun violence. And I'm right here in Philadelphia. I'm not in the suburbs. I'm in the middle of the storm. That's great. You know, that is incredibly brave. So when I came across your festival, I was like, oh my God, this is like a film that would be perfect. But I know that the festival is not until later in the year. Um, I know, it's, it's July. So it's not that much later. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's talk about that a little more, Kara, because honestly, I know Amy, our producer, who's on live too, like she's super passionate about gun reform. and. And I know this story would be perfect. 
And even if you do release it in, in June, maybe there is something that could happen in July, or maybe you want to push it till July, have a premiere here. <laughs> I'm, I'm down to chat about this. We'll talk more. You know, I know my Bay Area folks, so. <laughs> um, next project after that, um, hopefully, I shouldn't even say hopefully. I mean, it's coming down the pipeline. I am switching gears a little bit and i am venturing into the feature uh narrative world um not as a director but as a producer um so that's what i have started slowly working on um but also what's next is in five weeks i'm going to be on a beach Ooh, like come on. <laughs> resting you deserve, you deserve. And much needed rest okay that's great uh so if you're watching live and you have any questions for Kyra, please throw them in the chat. I definitely uh, want to keep uh, getting your ear here. As a director, I'm a director. Uh, talk to me about some of your best practices on set. Talk to me about shepherding a team and solving problems. Some of the things you're, you're most proud of you know, maybe it's a moment on set that you've had, and then I'd love to hear something that's been really discouraging. And you go, you know what, next time uh, it won't go like that because I learned from that issue. I'd love to hear any of the, the, the stories from the trenches. Okay, so, wow. Um, what I pride myself on as a director and also as a producer is that um, I have a family vibe on my sets. Um, and I actually, Ray Irmo, he started out with me. Um, <laughs> he's actually one of my guys that's um, part of Bad Things Happen in Philadelphia behind the scenes. Um, but uh, I pride myself on having a family environment, um, having a safe space for creatives, you know? Um, especially when we're working on personal projects, nothing is wrong, right? We don't have a client that's breathing down our neck. You know, this is a collaborative, you know, experiment, I guess you could say, because I call my personal projects, especially my short films, I call them my mixtapes, right? And my feature films is those are my albums. Um, and so I want to create a safe space for creator creatives to just create you know, when we're dealing on commercial projects, it's the client's vision, you know, and with our personal projects, it should be what our vision is. And if you have an idea, I'm not going to say to you, no, I'm the director, because there's been points where, you know, someone like Ray might have an idea. And I'm like, you know what? I didn't think about it in that angle. If I'm doing an interview, and I feel like I still didn't get what I was looking for, I'll ask my DP or my producer, do you have a question that you want to ask? Because they might see another angle because they've been listening the whole time, you know? So I guess, well, I just had a long story. <laughs> but long story short, having a collaborative, a creative, and a safe space. Um, as far as no, no, no's, I will never, ever direct and produce a feature film by myself again. <laughs> that was so hard. No joke. It's no joke because what people didn't realize was that, you know, when I would take off my creative hat, then I got to put on my producer hat and I got to figure out logistics and the fires. And I never had a time away. It was just constant, 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 constant. And I burnt myself out, you know? And because I burnt myself out, I saw little mistakes that other people not, might not be able to see, but I see it because I know I split the difference. And if I would have just trusted someone with my vision as a producer, then maybe those tiny mistakes that I made wouldn't be there anymore. Well, I'll, I'll say I totally resonate with that. And it's so hard 
to entrust your creative vision to people. You have to find trustworthy people. And it's often hard to do so. I think being a producer is not a title people should take on lightly, number one. Listen, um, listen, Linda, okay? <laughs> listen, Linda. <laughs> Producing is so hard. <laughs> People think they can they can just slap it on themselves or slap it on other people, but if you unless you truly know that the producer is the end all be all, like doing everything, like you sometimes you're getting the crafty, uh, you're you're hiring the people, you're dealing with the maybe erratic person who's interrupted your set and won't you know calm down, you're counseling, you're parenting, you're teaching, you have to do it all, and that's why. I hear you saying like it could easily burn someone out. Yeah. Uh, I want to see as we should be, we should create a producer program or something. We need because to. It, 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 it's <laughs> tough. It's really, really hard to produce a movie. And I think the best of the best are the ones that like they're, they're survivors and warriors and they, they, you, they gotta get to the beach. You gotta, you gotta have a ton of self care. So, mm, so, so you're hearing two producers out there saying, uh, we're looking for good producers, and I, I think we can help teach producing. I think, but some people are really born for it. Others, I think you can learn for it. I think it's a combination yeah. of both. But yeah. if you're willing, if you got a tough skin, you can fundraising, raise those funds, get Listen, that money. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that video that you were showing, because um, that's more of a sizzle. The official trailer for Bad Things Happen in Philadelphia is currently being edited right now. I used so when my friends and I when we started working the, working on this, everyone was working for free, right? Because I had no money, I had nothing, not a penny. And mind you, we're coming off of like COVID, so no what like again, nothing, pennies. Okay, thank God my husband is a chef, so at least my crew they ate extremely well. Um, like, but you know, after a few days of us filming. I said to myself, I'm like, we have something here. We have something here. And I'm not in the business also to exploit my friends. I want to be able to pay my friends. Even if I can only pay them a half rate, I want to pay them something. And so we took the footage of our few days that we shot and we created a sizzle. And that's how Mark Mims, my executive producer, who I still have not met Mark in person, but the way a executive producer and a producer relationship is like a marriage because you end up arguing, laughing, sometimes crying. I would call him with all types of things with this film. And um, he saw my sizzle and he told me, please do not crowdsource. I know you don't know me from a can of paint, I know that Edith, who's my film sister, who I met on Twitter, I keep telling you guys, go on Twitter. When Edith sh um, showed him my sizzle, he said, please, trust me, don't crowdsource. Mark Mims gave me the funding to finish my film off of that sizzle alone. You know, off of that sizzle alone. Wow. You, did you hear like, that? Like, Friends. Yes, I was able to pay my friends. Like I was able to pay, you know, my editor. I was a and everyone, they still gave me huge breaks because it's not like I had, you know, a huge budget, but he gave me, he gave me a lot of money to finish it. Money that no one, I never thought that someone who didn't know me from a can of paint would trust me with that type of money. And he did. And I'm forever grateful to him. And he's actually the one that got Alan Iverson onto this project as well. So, so gratitude. Cool. gratitude. You guys. Gratitude. Wow. I love it. I love to hear it. And I love that it happened through social media. And I love that you have a husband. Yeah. James is the chef. Way to go. That's, yeah. Do not underestimate. You hear this, people? The power branding and communicating and getting your work out there and sharing your vision. People gravitate to vision and passion and you have it. That's why I gravitated toward you. So I, I love this. This is freaking amazing. Any other questions people have, throw them in the comments. There's a lot of love coming through, uh, <laughs> calling you the goat and other things. And you have a lot of love in the comments for people who are here live. So 
Thank you, everybody, for joining episode 185 of the Brave Maker Live Show and Podcast. This will be the audio version will be edited by our editor from Grand Rapids, Michigan, Barnell Amos, in about a week or two. So when you hear this, when you see it out in the world, share it with other people. If you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe to this channel so that we can get more of these amazing conversations into your your feed. And let's see, let's see if we can get uh, this feature length documentary called Bad Things Happen in Philadelphia in the Bay Area for a screening and a panel discussion with the director and producer, <laughs> otherwise known as Kyra Knox. I'm gonna work on that, y'all. All right, anything else you wanna say? Like anything burning, any filmmaker advice burning within you that you have not said so far that you wanna uh, leave out into the world as we close up this part of the conversation? One thing I wanna say is build on your film community. Build on your film community. Um, the Rays, the Hectors, Dan Abel, Jalen, Sam, Kevin, all of these people that have, Joe Grasso, like all these people that have helped me with this film, I worked with them on professional projects, you know? And you find out that commercial projects, corporate projects, you know, they can be suffocating, you know, because you're, you're not doing anything meaningful and you're not, you're doing stuff that's creative, but it's someone else's vision. And you will be surprised that if you just ask your fellow crew members, like, hey, do you want to work on this with me? You'd be surprised at how many people would just jump at the chance to just do something different, you know? So build on your film community. Um, and one thing I want to say to women, 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 do not let people this dissuade you from following your dreams. When I was 34 years old, there were so many naysayers out there. There were so many people that were talking to my husband and saying, why are you letting Kyra get that right? Why are you letting Kyra? Why are you letting Kyra quit her corporate job? Shouldn't she be having a baby? Shouldn't she be at home? Shouldn't she be doing this? And we never listened to the naysayers. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter if you have a child. It doesn't matter what part of your life you're in. You only have one life to live. This is not a rehearsal, right? This is showtime. And you don't want to wake up, you know, and you're still sitting in that cubicle. Or you're still sitting here you, and you're still saying, Dad, one day, you know, I'm going to do it. And then... One day you realize you didn't even try. Imagine if I never tried. Imagine if I never took that step into my corporate office and said, I'm quitting my job to follow my dream. I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be talking to you. I wouldn't be talking to the masses. So don't let anyone dissuade you from your dreams and put your, can I cuss? Put your fucking blinders on and just go, just go. And that's all I got to say. Just go. Boom. You all <laughs> heard it from Iris. Just go and stop making excuses. That was beautiful. Yes. You got it within you, everybody. Go for it. I love it. Okay. This was motivating me to get off my my ass and keep, <laughs> keep, keep making stuff. So thank you, Kyra. Uh, where could people find you on all of the interwebs? Oh, no. I froze. Oh, there I am. <laughs> <laughs> So you can find me on my website, obviously, uh, www.kyranox.com. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at kyranox underscore. Um, and they're the same. And like I said, my door is always open. I might not be able to get to you right away, but there are plenty of people in the Twitter community and, and Instagram community they know that I always end up eventually getting back to them. And I set up Zoom calls and mm -hmm. I chat with them. My door is always open. And now I've been able to see a few people just grow like so far in this industry so far. There's enough love. glitter for everybody, right? So. Oh my gosh, I love to see it. Thank you so much. Okay, so we are not done. Uh, we end our show with a simple little lightning round uh, that we like to call Brave Fade. Uh, 
Brave Faves. TV shows, films, books, songs, technology, clothing, podcast food, and more. These are a few of our favorite people, places, and things. Brave Faves. Okay, I will start with my brave fave of the week. This is a book written by a former guest on the podcast, and check this out, a future guest of the Brave Maker Film Festival. Her name is Nicole Levy. She wrote a book called The Writer's Room. Nicole currently is on Netflix's show called The Recruit. She's the executive producer and a writer, uh, mostly in the television space, also has some feature film work under her belt. Nicole's book, The Writer's Room, is so chock full of practical advice. If you wanna be a TV writer, this is the book for you. Okay, it's called The Writer's Room, check it out. And Nicole will be in person, did you hear this? In person with us in July in Redwood City, where I happen to be right now. So check out the Brave Maker Film Festival, come meet Nicole, buy her book. All right, what's your brave fave? Could be anything, Kyra, what do you got? So Favorite thing of the week. This is gonna be very brave because filmmakers are probably gonna come after me. Cause I'm about to say something that's so not uh -oh. right uh -oh. So when I have a lot going on in pre-production, whatever like that, um, I actually like to watch reality TV. So this week, and actually tonight, my brain thing is Vanderpump Rules because it's been like, like <laughs> this Tom Swartz and, and Ariana and everything like that has been consuming my brain because I've been watching Vanderpump Rules since it first started. And I cannot wait until that episode tonight because Andy Cohen has given this huge disclaimer. Yes! yes! <laughs> so we got the juice. <laughs> I love it. Hey, when you do all the work that we do, we have to sometimes decompress with ridiculousness. Yes. One, of, one of my brave faves was the reality show called Traders on Netflix. It's ridiculous, but it's so fun. Anyway, this was so good, uh, Kyra. Thank you so, so much for your time. Don't go away. Let me do uh, the thank yous. As always, I want to say thank you to those of you who are watching live. Uh, please make sure you're following us on all of our our pages. You know, you can tweet at us. We're on Insta. We're on we're on TikTok. We're on all the places. BraveMakerOrg. Just find us. Love to connect with you all there. I, just like Kyra, want to be available to people. And if I can help out in your filmmaking journey, I'm, I'm, I'm there. I love to produce. I love to write. I love to direct and act. And so if I can offer my services in any way, I am totally down to do that. Uh, those of you who are a part of the regular show know that Brave Maker is a 501c3 nonprofit and we don't do this work. Uh, we don't take it for granted. We can't do it without all of you, your generosity. We have 30 people every week or every month uh, who give uh, a small donation to pay for our editors and our producers. And if that is you, if you're interested in being a part of this, uh, please just join in. Uh, go to bravemaker.com to to uh, donate, or you can use your phone. Just text the word Brave Maker to 44321. That's text the word Brave Maker to 44321. And make sure you follow us for the, the film festival that's coming up in July. We have so many cool people coming actors, filmmakers, screenwriters, producers. You can follow me on all the socials. I'm Tony Gapason, and follow me at my website, tonygap.com. I love getting to talk to people like Kyra and every week I'm here doing it. So I hope you'll join me uh, every Wednesday, 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard. All right, Kyra, this has been amazing. Uh, I really value you and your presence. I know it's been a hard week for you. So my uh, peace and prayer sending out to you and to your family. And I hope I get to uh, see you in person and see your film and meet your husband, James, and maybe eat some delicacies uh, that he cooks. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, we, we, we will uh, stay in touch. I, I have a, a good feeling about that. So thank you so yes, much for will. being on the show today. Don't go away uh, because I want to uh, say one more thing to you before we end. But everybody else, thank you so much for watching and being a part. Make sure you follow Kyra and reach out to her and tell her what this meant. Okay? Thanks, Kyra. See you later. Brave thank stories you, change Kyra. the world. You are the story. Don't go away, Kyra. <laughs>
Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook at BraveMaker.org. Like, subscribe, and share. To become a monthly donor, text the word BraveMaker to 44321 or go to BraveMaker.com slash donate. Thanks for tuning in.